Hi guys, my name is Brie, and I am the creator of Canvas and Craft by Brie. So today I'm going to be walking you through how to do the Half Light Drift painting tutorial. For this, we're going to start off actually real easy. We're only going to need three colors of paint. So those will be our primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. And then we're going to use the white for tint and black for shading. So again, those are just the three colors, red, yellow, blue with white and black as our tint and shade. We're also going to be using only three paintbrushes today, our large one, medium, and small. And if you guys do have a tiny detailing brush, I would recommend that later on when we do uh, some birds just to finish off the painting. Otherwise, don't sweat it, you can use your small brush as well. So what we're going to first start doing is take the yellow and we're going to create a line about halfway down our canvas and this is going to be where we want our horizon to eventually be with the ocean. So I did add some white in there, it makes it a little bit more muted and we're just going to drag back and forth uh, mixing up the yellow and the white creating an almost streaky-like pattern between them. So for the yellow, it is going to go up about halfway from where we started, so that should be about three fourths of the canvas up. And then what you can see is I'm adding in a little bit of red and white, so that way we create a nice golden orange color. So by blending it in with the white, we are toning down the yellow hue to shine through a little bit for when we create that ombre sunset. And another trick that we can do during our painting is if you have a wrapped canvas like I do today, if you paint on these sides, then you'll be able to hang up your painting as soon as it's dry. There will be no need to frame it and just stick a command hook on the wall and you have your painting ready to go. So what I'm doing right now is I'm adding the red along the top portion of the painting with a little bit of yellow just to make it a teeny bit brighter. And what I'm going to be doing is blending in that red to get a deep rosy pink almost. So the white will help aid in lightening up the red so it's not a fire engine red. Also you can see that I have added a little bit of water to my brush. Certain colors are a bit more stubborn. The red in particular that I have is making it difficult so I did add a little bit of water. So right now we're just going to cover up that top portion, that last quarter with red and we're going to be blending it in with that nice deep orangey rose color that we have. One thing I would like to point out with the blending of the color, if you guys haven't blended it to your liking completely and you feel like you could have done a better job, you're more than welcome while the paint is wet to go back. Reblend it, just make sure that you clean off your brush in between colors. Otherwise, if you go right into the yellow portion with a red brush, you're going to have a giant red streak on the yellow. Another tip uh, for you guys is if things aren't blended 100% how you like it and you don't feel like going back in and blending it, which is totally okay, we will be actually adding in some clouds in a little bit and that's a perfect way to mask some of the colors that we've blended together today and it'll help look more uniform like a sky that's changed color at sunset once we add in those clouds. So what I'm doing now that we have our sky blended, I'm going to clean off my brush and I'm going to make sure that there is no red left on it. And once I'm satisfied, I'm going to take a little bit of white on my brush and we're going to stroke it into to the different uh, ombre where they meet. So the reason for this is it helps give it more of that glow 
that a sunset would give off with blending in the colors. It'll be able to pick up a few more pinks, uh, oranges, and yellows that we might not have necessarily had before. So this gives us a little bit more of the color wheel to play with. And if you guys noticed, when I go from the red to the yellow, I do bring down a little bit of the red with me. So that way it almost looks like there's some clouds in the distance that have picked up those red hues. If you're able to do that, that'll actually create an optical illusion almost. Um, same thing with if you wanted to add a little bit of yellow, go up towards the orange and the red. When you flip flop the colors on top of each other like that, it tricks the eye into thinking things are more blended than they actually are. So that's another good way for you guys to play with the optical illusion of colors if you're not completely satisfied with how you started with your blending. So as you guys can see, I am or I'm holding my brush horizontally. That way, I'm creating more of those wispy strokes like you would see for an sky. And you can see when I'm going into the yellow portion of the painting that we've done, I take air minimum red to the point that I had to check my brush about two times before I put it on the canvas just because I didn't want a harsh red line where I've got the where I have those nice yellow hues. So now that we are done with our sky portion, I'm going to start making the blue for the ocean. So that's going to be one giant scoop of white and a tinier, tinier scoop about the size of a pea of the blue. The reason for that is it was a very vibrant color and so it'll absorb into that white very fast. So for this part, we're actually going to fill up the entire bottom half of the canvas with the blue. That way we will have our ocean part done. So the same trick that I told you guys earlier with the sky, if you need to add a little bit water to make the paint move a little smoother, make it a little more of a watercolor base. As you can see, I'm turning my canvas right now to get those stretched sides covered. Just be careful that the sky is still wet. 
Um, so when you go to grab it, you might get paint on your hands. If you are using acrylic, just make sure that it has only hit your skin. That'll come off in a couple hand washes, but if it does get on your clothes, you need to wash that right away. So once I get up to the horizon portion of this painting, I will be doing something similar with the horizontal side of my brush. So I want to have as much control as possible when we are making these horizon lines. I'm doing the horizon freeform, but if you guys want to use a piece of masking tape to put over the yellow portion, just make sure that the yellow of the sky is completely dry. You can do that by running a hair dryer real quick on the cool setting over the yellow portion. Once you touch the paint, you'll be able to tell if it's wet or not. But if it still has that glassy look, there is a good chance that it is still wet. So what I'm going to be doing down towards the bottom portion of the ocean is adding in a little bit of the white paint, similar to what we did in the sky earlier, to give it more of a variation in colors. And then I will be also making a darker blue. This blue is going to be used to edge the horizon where the ocean meets the sky. And then I'll be putting the darker paint as well up on those far sides of the ocean to give it some more dimension in here. So we want that water nice crystal clear in front and then it gets darker the farther away the ocean is. So as you can see on the sides, I am adding in that darker color, but I'm blending it out into the light so that way it does blend.
you can see, I'm using my brush horizontally with that darker blue color. So now that we have finished the ocean, we're going to let that dry, uh, just like we let the sky dry while we were doing the ocean portion. So remember how I said how we could cover up our happy accidents with clouds? Well, that's what we're going to be doing with our stippling technique and the clouds in the sky today. So what you're going to want to do is take a little bit of white paint and we're going to stipple, which is just we're going to fastly poke, we're going to fast poke it onto the canvas and so in order to make it look kind of like a cloud we do want to have it pointed near the top and then taper out uh, kind of like a triangle out on the sides so as you can see that's what I'm doing here and I'm gonna focus most of my clouds on where the colors met so that way I can cover up a couple of the spots that were too harsh for me to blend and you won't even be able to tell the difference once these clouds are in here. Adding the white on top of the red and orange will not be difficult to see just because it is very light and those are more, uh, those are darker colors. However, when you go to add the clouds on the yellow portion of the painting, I do recommend adding in a teeny, teeny, teeny bit of red to your white paint. Um, you can mix it on your mixing plate. Make it a bit easier to see those clouds in the yellow section.
So as you can see, I'm starting to put the cloud into that yellow section and you can barely tell the difference between the yellow and the white of the cloud. So I will be adding in a teeny bit of red just to help make it stand out a little bit better once I've laid down the approximate outline using the white paint of where I would like my clouds to be in the yellow section. Just touching up the edge of the horizon where I'd gone slightly over on my blue which is the wonderful thing about painting once you let it dry you can paint right back over it and nobody will be the wiser that you made a little happy accident so once I'm done with this yellow portion we're actually going to start with the sun reflection we're going to take a little bit of the yellow and white paint and we're going to make it into a watery consistency. So for a sun reflection, it will be a triangle coming from the sun. So right now we don't have a sun on there, but we will be adding in the sun shortly. So by doing that same flat brush stroking back and forth, it makes it look like there is movement in the water that's not exact. So that watery blue that we had used earlier, I'm going to be mixing it, that same technique, along the tr yellow triangle so that way you can see how the water has moved and that it's moving. Once I've added that, I'm going to actually clean off my brush and now I'm going to go back and forth with just my clean brush and try and blend those colors a little bit more. The green into the blue, the green into the yellow and that way it'll look more like a reflection. And another way to help trick your eye into thinking that it's blended a bit better is we're gonna have that white and blue mix and we're going to stroke it in and out of the sun's reflection and it'll actually look like the sun is only hitting certain parts of the waves and not all of them because the water is moving. I would recommend cleaning your brush and then get your brush to just a slightly damp, you don't want it dripping wet or anything, and you can use it to stroke the paint back and forth, helping it blend further into the blue ocean that we've already painted. You don't want to blend it too much, because otherwise you're just going to have a green spot in the middle of your ocean, so you do want to keep some of that yellow. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to clean off that 
large size brush and we will actually be using our small brush. So what we're going to be doing is creating the sun. So what I want you to do is take one scoop of yellow and about a half scoop of red because remember that red is a very strong color and we want a orangish. We'll be also adding in a little bit of white just to tone it down because I use too much red for the color sun that I want. If you guys want a bright yellow sun, you're more than welcome to do that. Same thing with the red sun if you want to do that. But for this video, I think it'll look nice to have the orange to show the contrast against the yellow. So an easy way to get a circle with a small brush is for you to stick it onto the canvas and kind of twist your wrist in a circular motion and that'll give you a near perfect circle and you can go in like I'm doing now after I've done that and just fixing up a, fixing up a couple spots So as I had mentioned earlier, I did make a happy accident um, and put the blue a little too high. So on the left hand side, now that the paint has had time to dry, I'm actually going to add in a little bit more yellow to cover up that little streak from when I went too high on the ocean earlier. That way I have a more crisp horizon line. So now at this time, we are going to be making the sand. So it's going to be a little dark at first, just because I do want to give it that dark sand look and we will be adding in a lighter color later on. If you guys want to go lighter with this, just add more yellow and white and less red. But for this, I do want a round color um, for my painting. So like I said, if you guys want to go lighter, definitely go lighter, use less black and red and more uh, yellow and white. So for the color that I'm using for this painting, it's going to be one part red, one part yellow, a teeny bit of black, and two scoops, uh, two tiny scoops of the white that I use my small brush for. So as you can see, once I blend it in, I do have this nice light brown color and I'm going to make almost like a U shape on the bottom portion, like a stretched U on the bottom portion of the canvas and that's going to be where the waves are hitting the shore. It'll make more sense and look less like a triangle when we're done. And for this part, I know I've been telling you guys to go around the edges. Um, however, as I said, we will be doing a lighter brown color. So there's no need for you to paint the bottom portion of the canvas at this time. If you want to do the sides, I did it just out of habit this time. But it's not necessary to paint the sides just yet. We'll be adding in more color in a little bit with that lighter sand color. So now we're going to be doing that lighter portion of sand that I told you about earlier. So you're going to take a little scoop 
of the paint, of the dark paint that we had and some white. And you're just gonna make a squiggly back and forth over the sand. That way it'll look like there's little bumps and crevices just like when you go to the beach and it's not always perfectly flat. So that'll give it a little bit more dimension. So now I'm going to use that same lighter color and we are actually going to make a few rocks out in the water. You don't have to do the rocks, it's not necessary other than just a regular beach and sky and ocean, it gives it some more dimension. So for my rocks, they look like just little bumps in the water right now. We will be adding some shading and highlighting in a minute and they'll start to look more like rocks. For this painting, I've only added the rocks to the right hand side, but if you guys want to add them to the left, the center, a little farther back in the water, please feel free to do so. So that way my hand's not covering the entire camera painting it. For this video, I'm only doing them on the right hand side, which makes it a little bit easier for you guys to view the painting. So now I took that dark colored brown and a little bit of black and what I'm going to be doing is shading in these rocks. So on the right hand side of each rock, I'm going to make kind of like a triangle uh, along the right hand side and I'll zoom in right here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. The reason for this is it creates a little bit of a shadow and we will be adding in some white shortly so that way we can highlight as well the parts that are being touched by the sun. Another way to make the rock stand out is to actually line the right hand side with black where the shadows will be. It'll make it easier to blend in for you as well as give that crisp definition. So now what I'm doing is I took that same, that light brown paint, except for this time I added some more white even to it, and that I'm going to be adding to the left hand side of the painting. We're going to do the exact same thing that we just did with the black, this way adding the highlights. And now you should have three colors that have slightly blended into each other on the rock. There's the dark brown, that medium brown, which is our original color, and then the light brown that we've made. And by doing so now, it looks like that these rocks actually are sitting in the ocean and have the sun reflecting on them. So now sticking with that same little brush, I want you guys to clean it off really well because we are going to be doing the water foam line where the water goes up onto the beach. So with that we're going to be using the same stippling technique that we did with the clouds and white, but this time we're going to be doing it along the shoreline on the bottom portion of the canvas where the sand meets the water. 
One thing I do want to be mindful is that if the sand is still a little wet, if you've used a lot of it, the white will blend in to the brown. With that, we are going to do actually another couple layers of the foam. And you can also blow dry your canvas or take a 5-10 minute break if you would like. That way, it gives the paint a little bit more time to dry. So while the stippling is drying along the edge of the waterline, we are going to make a light blue color. So we're going to use blue and a little bit of white and we're just going to be adding in some thin lines, again with that small brush, just to show that the water is moving. It gives a little bit more dimension to the painting. Another thing that you can do is use a dark blue. So if you take just the dark blue with a little bit of water, you can then do the exact same thing that we're doing with the white and do little strokes throughout the water as well. And that'll show where it's a little bit darker, where there might be a school of fish underneath, um, or there was a wave that darkened the sea in that area. So what I'm going to be doing here is actually adding those similar white lines that we were just doing around the ocean to the rocks. So I'm going to zoom in on this part, that way you can see exactly what I'm doing. And another way to trick the viewer into thinking that the water is actually moving is to make a little V on a sideways V on the right hand side or the left hand side depending on which way the water is coming from. For today it's going to be the right hand side but it makes it look like the water is actually moving around these rocks, which is pretty cool. And you can add a few more ripples of the white around the rocks just to show that there's other rocks in the area and the water isn't completely still. Now that you guys have come back from your break, we're going to do a little bit more stippling along the waterline. We're going to go over where we have before. If you go kind of almost in a zigzag pattern up and down, so a little bit above where you went before, a little bit below, so it looks like that the water is coming in at different levels in different places.
So remember how I said we were gonna do that dark and that lighter colored sand? So I put my canvas up on the top part of my easel just so it's easier for you guys to see. But I took that dark brown and I added some white to it. And I will be following the general shape of the waterline that I have on here. So it'll look kind of like a U. And that way, uh, when I slightly blend it into that darker brown, it'll actually look like that the water is wet on that portion that's closer to the ocean. So on this part, actually, I'm just going over a couple of those water lines out by the rocks. I didn't feel they were bright enough white. Uh, they were a little dull, so I'm just doing it one more time to make it a bit more vibrant, give it an extra coat. That way you can see it a bit farther away and you don't have to be real close to see that the water is moving. Okay, so for this part, we're actually going to be doing the wave, and I want to let you guys know, I do use some white chalk. Um, as you can see, I'm starting to kind of sketch out where I want the wave to be, but I realized that it's a little bit easier to do it in chalk for you guys to see first. So, we're going to start with this long line, and then it's going to slowly swoop up, and then right back down. So I'm going to zoom in on this part right here so that way you can see and then I connect that far left line to the top of what looks like the arch. And then in here I'm actually going to be making the paint color for the wave. So I'll be mixing one part blue and two parts white just to make it a much lighter blue. And I'm going to slowly fill in just to get the general gist of where this wave is going to be. That way you guys can see it a little bit better and it'll make it a bit easier actually once we start adding in more details for the wave. So as you can see I'm starting under the arch portion. I do want it to be light up on top and then we're going to blend it into that darker color of what the ocean's um, blue color is that's out there. And so I'm also going to be coloring in general gist of the shape of the wave uh, for those details that I said we would be going into later on. You do want it to taper out um, to the far end because we will be adding some more stippling with the foam just to show that the wave has crashed and it looks a bit more realistic. So I'll be using that darker blue color just to blend it up into the eye of the wave. That way it
As you can see, I keep dragging up that darker blue up into the light. It'll make it a bit more realistic with the shading. As you guys can see, I'm taking that original blue color from the wave, from the ocean, and I keep dragging it up to the top part of the eye of the wave. And it makes it a bit more realistic as we drag up that dark blue. It does blend in with that light color. And once we've added in a few more details into this wave, you'll see why we're dragging in the ocean color and it'll look a lot more like a wave is crashing right before it hits the shore. Even though I was dragging up quite a bit of that blue and I am adding in darker blue, I am also adding in a little bit of pure white near the very, very top portion of the wave. Again, because I do want to create that contrast, even though it's blending and we're going to be do we're making this ombre effect like we did with the sky, just with blue and white this time. But I do want to make sure that it is a you are able to see that the eye of the wave is a lot brighter, that the sun is shining through it, that's why it's this light color. And the bottom portion of the wave that is closer to the actual ocean is that darker blue shade. And as you can see, I am dragging out that darker blue color down towards the rocks, just because I do wanna make sure that it is blended out and that way it looks a bit more natural to have that darker ocean color blending in, the darker blue blending into the ocean and making sure that white light color uh, where the eye of the wave is, is up top. You don't want it too light, uh, too far down into the ocean, otherwise it won't look like the wave is crashing. So the same way we did the stippling in the sky, we did it with the foam on the waves, or we did it on the waves crashing onto the shore, we're going to now stipple along the wave. So we're going to start all the way out on the far end, work our way up towards the eye of the wave up top, and then we'll come back down um, on the other side of the wave and then blend it just slightly out on the right hand side once, uh, which you guys can see here, that I've, I've stippled that to make it almost look like it is the waters crashing with this wave. So the same way we had done the stippling of the waves coming in to the shore, we also want to make sure that the stippling for the wave, for this big wave that we are doing that's crashing in front of our picture, is not very symmetrical or very uniform. We want to make sure that there's certain parts that are a little bit higher, so a little bit lower. As you can see on the far left side of the screen, I am having the foam almost blend into the ocean just a little bit so that way it looks like the wave was created there and it didn't just come out of nowhere. So right now I did a rough fill in earlier with that light blue color on the wave and I'm going in I'm filling it in a bit more where it was a little too transparent for my liking so that way I can start filling in a few more details but I do want to make sure that it is light blue on there and any of the blue from the ocean that darker blue color is covered
Okay, so for this part, I'm going to use a very watered down white and I'm going to slightly put in a few curves along the wave. So as you guys can see here, I'm starting at the top of the wave and I'm slowly stroking down to create the illusion that there are different depths in the waves. And I am also using this light, wa this light white color to almost outline the tops of the waves. So when we outline this, if you're using your tiny brush or your small brush, that's great. If you do have a detailed brush, you can use that as well. That'll help you make these little, um, almost wavy lines on top of the wave. That way you can show more depth and dimension. As you can see, because I use such a transparent white, I am going over a few of the places, just a little bit from the bottom as well as the top to create a little bit more of an opaque color. So by adding multiple layers of a semi-transparent color, it will get darker the more layers you add, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm just layering them on top of each other so that I do get a few spots that it is darker. And again, I am slightly outlining the top portion of the wave so that you can see that the light is hitting off of this wave. So as you can see, I am adding in a bit more white. Again, this is all up to personal preference. There is no right or wrong at this time. I am adding a very, very watered down yellow to the top portion of the wave. And the reason why I'm doing this after I did the white is I didn't want it to look green. Because I put down a white base on the um, wave so far, it will create more of that yellow vibrant color rather than blending in with the blue and making it into a green color. So at this point, you can wrap up any parts you want to fix up. So going back to the horizon line, I'm going in with my yellow and edging out the horizon, making sure that everything is straight, it is even. 
that way when I have the final painting there won't be parts of the ocean that are a little bit higher uh, than the sky is. So for this part we're actually going to be doing the birds. So I took, I started with a grey, which you guys are going to see I'm going to end up going over it with a black color later on because I didn't like how light it was because you can't see the birds even with me zooming in here it's very hard to tell. So to make the birds it's actually very simple. We're going to go back to elementary school where we did the little M's almost. The only thing is we're not going to make it a complete M. I'm just going to use the inside part like you guys can see here. As you guys can see now, I am going in for that black and when I go over the gray portion of the birds, because I did do the gray first, it does actually add another element, uh, which I wasn't expecting when I first did this. At first I thought I completely messed up because the gray is much thicker than the black lining, but it does give you actually a little bit extra to the painting, which is nice. And so while I have my detailed brush, I am going in on the rocks, adding in some finite uh, details, adding in a few more of those lines with the black, with the white, making sure that everything is edged exactly where I want it to be. Um, so now is the time pretty much to use, to use your artistic talent and make this painting your own. I did have this suggestion from one of my friends when I told them I was making this painting that I should put a dolphin um, coming up out of the waves. I didn't feel like <laughs> doing it this time, but if you guys want to add a dolphin or a whale or a sailboat or add more birds or clouds or even add a whole nother wave, you can do that. Add some more rocks. If you want to put footprints in the sand, you can do that. Um, even though I didn't do anything in the sand. You guys, uh, if you use a little bit of a darker brown or tan than the sand color, you can then write in the sand and make it um, like two interlocking hearts or footsteps, something along those lines. There's a lot that can be added to this painting. Um, that's why I wanted to keep it simple because I want to give you the building blocks for the painting and then let you take it from there. 
All right, guys and gals, that's gonna wrap it up for this painting tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give this video a like, and if you wanna see more, subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you liked, disliked, learned, or thought in the comments below. And thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.